Ciao Juventino of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel. You can't imagine how happy I am to record this morning's video. Why? Because we can speak again about football on the field. And if today we have already some appetizers with a game of Liga and a game of Bundesliga, from tomorrow we will have to look with an interested eye, Napoli, Inter, even Lazio, because the results of these games of tomorrow will tell us even more about the importance of Milan-Juve. A Milan-Juve that will be fought for an important spot in the ranking of Serie A. And usually, I am someone that is quite cautious. When you are at match day 9, I don't tell you that it's vital, crucial and already decisive, because it makes no sense. With 10, nearly 30 games to play in Serie A, I'm old enough to remember the huge remontada in a simple game, but also in a long league, so it is not decisive. But more than ever, I can tell you that the results of tomorrow against Milan, well, will be important. Will be important to understand which weapons we can take to fight for. Are we fighting for a top four? Easy. Are we fight for a top four with difficulties? Or are we maybe fighting for something more? I will tell you all the details about Milan Juve, but we'll also speak about Mercato. And the results of the game of Sunday will be important also to understand how much and how great that Mercato in January can be for Giuntoli. After you putting a maximum of like, of course, after you subscribing to the channel and also commenting because I didn't record that many videos this week so if you can comment and let me know your state of mind that would be really great so I know a bit if we are aligned or not about all the topics that we will speak about in today's video so now that you did that let's start with some good news going towards Milan Juve since yesterday all the players are back from international break and they were there at La Continassa and that's already a great news why because we can start preparing the game today on Saturday and then we travel to Milan with the last details before the game on the other side we have one big huge question mark that at the moment on the 20th of October, I can't give you an answer, is the physical state of Federico Chiesa. I told you that this week would be important for him to understand which of the three options we could have. Or Chiesa from the start, but that would have meant that he was already training with the team since Tuesday, maximum Wednesday, and he didn't, because since yesterday evening he was not training with the team, so forget about Chiesa from the start. Can we still possibly see him on the bench? Well, it will depend on today and tomorrow. If we see him again training with the team, you can be nearly sure that he will travel with the team to San Siro. If not, ragazzi, we go towards the ter third option. Chiesa for the second game in a row, not being called up. Is it a drama? Yeah, of course it is a drama. Of course it's an annoying situation. But it's absolutely not an excuse because we will miss players and we'll come back on who. Milan will miss players. So both teams have not complete teams, so it will be a duel that I can already tell you. We will find 11 men and 11 men to play against each other, but not two teams with fantastic 100% physical condition and all their best players at disposal. So no excuses, we have to go in San Siro with a total different behavior than the game of Bergamo against Atalanta, because that would be a key factor of that huge big game of Sunday. If we go and we are scared because we are missing a Chiesa, a Fagioli, a Pogba, a Danilo. Eh, ragazzi, if we are scared, we will never go towards the goal of Milan. And that can be an opportunity because they will not play with Mignon, that is banned for one game. We will not play against Sportiello, that is an extremely valid second goalkeeper. But yesterday or two days ago, he was injured. But we will have to face their third goalkeeper if we want to be more chances we have to shot on goal and if we are not able to go on target eh, it makes no sense you can even play with Giroud in the goal it will change zero so no excuse about that about Federico Chiesa we will monitor it here Gazzetta dello Sport is going towards a huge title probably a bit too early but in a way I can understand it who is the team chi è più da Scudetto who is the team that is more a Scudetto team is it Milan is it Juve my opinion, if Milan win, they are really a serious candidate to have their 20th Scudetto, the second star like Renders is asking for. If Juve wins, we are still not first. We can still be third, closer, closing the gap, but still not first. And I believe that for Juve, we need a few games in a row with beautiful wins, not only with points, but also 
in terms of our performances to say yes Juve is from Scudetto but we see Leao and we see Rabiot and now little quiz because Rabiot has a big huge opportunity for the very first time to wear that captain armband is important absolutely yes who was the last Frenchman to wear a captain band in a game of Juve can you please tell me in the comment I'm curious about who will be the first one to answer and how many of you without cheating and looking at the other comments are able to tell me the correct answer so tell me I'm curious to read them now we are speaking about two total different clubs because if some people will tell me Milan is fantastic and Juve what did I read uh, it's over uh, we are a finished club how far we have fallen how down i don't know what people are saying well if we are putting things into perspective we have two total different teams especially analyzing the last 11 years if on one side the rossoneri in 11 years they won three times a cup one time the scudetto two times supercoppa italiana they changed four times management ownership in the four in the 11 last four years from silvio berlusconi to redberg that last year or this year celebrated one year of ownership well they changed nine coaches in all that process with a lot of down because if 11 years ago we were able to beat them and taken the our first of il of nine scudetti in a row they were second then they felt third position and then the big drama eight tenth seven twice sixth in a row fifth sixth again second remontada of milan milan is back and winning the scudetto last two seasons ago where last season they flopped again because if you see that number four in the picture that I'm showing you they were fourth on paper on the field they were again not able to qualify for the biggest cup the Champions League on the other side you have a Juventus in the last 11 years well nine times they were able to win the Scudetto from 11 12 to 1920 where then you finished twice fourth and last season on paper seventh but we all know that we were between the second and the third position in the last 11 years 19 trophies which is immense and last week we all saw that fantastic together black and white evening black and white show that showed us 100 years of ownership five coaches with one that is Max Alec that was twice on our bench so two total different teams two total different stories if today Milan is trendy with all their American players, especially in USA, the new ownership that is going with a Mercato that a lot of people are even putting the word Moneyball next to it. And if you didn't watch the movie, go watch it with Brad Pitt from a real story of baseball. They were also able to do it with our money. Don't forget that because Juve should have received that Champions League money and invest. Today we are in a total different way of doing Mercato because if they go with the stats and the money ball way we will have to wait first balancing the books and then we go towards a person juntoli that is going with feelings that is going with flares yes stats are important of course but also the feeling and to see the effects of juntoli on juve we'll probably have to wait towards january for the first real names that can come to juve and we will speak about them in a second corriere dello sport is giving me a more realistic view outsider Juve because Juve and also the recent story of Milan Juve games are not going in favor of the Bianconeri are telling us that the old lady is an outsider can they do it yes they can why not again no excuses because we will find 11 men to play on the field here we see Milik and Moiskin but there is maybe another surprise on the other side they are speaking about the absences of Milan because Milan will have only Mirante who is Mirante well 40 years old goalkeeper that will be able if he starts the game against Juve to play his very first game as a starter for Milan until now in two years he played only one minute it was last season he changed Mignon in the end of the game he played again one minute only in last season Serie A he can start the game for the first time in the last two years but Miranti is also a next Juve for the older ones you will probably remember that Mirante played at Juventus and he was our second goalkeeper in the season 2006-2007 when we were in second division. Mirante that played seven games with Juve. He's not the only choice because it could be another 
goalkeeper that can start for Milan, and it is Lapo, not Lapo Elkan, but Lapo Nava, the son of an ex-defender of Milan that is playing with the youth academy team. He will be or second goalkeeper on the bench, or he will start. And I'm always scared with these young goalkeepers that suddenly are playing a huge game because I always remember these beautiful fairy tales of Gianluigi Buffon when he was 16 years old debuting against Milan when he was playing at Parma and then we know the career that Gianluigi had and he finished on that wall there is a reason why so not 100% sure that it will be Mirante pay attention to the young kid now we go towards another topic it's Fagioli yesterday uh, it's official now the seven months of Ben and he will be potentially able to play again football not next season but this season in the very last game against Monza end of May will he play or not I have no idea who knows that would be a beautiful fairy tale that he could uh, jump on the field to celebrate a Scudetto I'm exaggerating probably yes but that would be beautiful the season is not over for Fagioli also because he will continue to train with his teammates so he will always be integrating the team he will not train individually he will do everything for what reason because Juventus Football Club yesterday also announced it on their site they will give a maximum of support to the kid the kid he's guilty we know it, he already spoke about and there is no way of defending. But now we try to turn the page. That doesn't mean that we erase or cancel it because it will never be cancelled what he did. But we are there to support a kid that is in need. So he will also receive that support from Juventus and I think that uh, that's the best decision ever. Let's see what will happen for Fagioli in the end of the season. A lot of things has been said about Calcio Scommesse, about betting, gambling scandal in Italy. Why am I not speaking too much about it? Because it's something that is disgusting me. Because there is nothing to defend for the players that are betting. Because they know the risk. On the other side, I'm super pissed off. When I see a video of leaks where we see pointing fingers on Massimiliano Allegri. Because during COVID time he was playing poker. I don't like how we are reporting this news. And I prefer to avoid it because... We all know that he has a lot of horses, that he loves to bet on horses, which is absolutely not illegal. Playing poker during COVID is not illegal, especially because he was not even a coach of a team because he was out of Juve at that moment without any team. So if we want to start going with scandals about that one, I think it's really extremely disgusting, especially from someone that has absolutely no morale because he clearly said multiple times, I'm a big, huge Inter fan and I will absolutely not mention any Inter player. I'm not here to blame Inter. I'm not here to blame Inter players. But guys, ragazzi, pay attention to what you hear and what you read online because I don't like it. Going back to football, Tutto Sport. You see two players, Renders and Dusan Vlaovic on their first page. Renders, Juve, Titorgo, Dusan. Juve, I will take away from you, Dusan. On the other side, you see Vlaovic that is saying, going straight towards the objective. Objective of playing football, but also towards winning. That's the objective of Dusan Vlaovic. Well, we have good news about Dusan because also him was at risk he didn't take part of the Serbian national team international break but yesterday we saw him training and he's looking really in big form and then there was also another small video that we saw from the training session of La Continassa where we saw a Dusan Vlaovic that was going with a bicycle kick una bicicletta a movement that ragazzi it's quite difficult to do in general, but especially when you are still suffering from lombalgia, from low back pain. So if he's able to do these kind of gestures yesterday, I think that he's 100% or 90% health and that he can start the game against Milan. And I'm happy about that. I watched the video where he said, I'm not a big king of freestyle football skills and so on, but if you put the ball in the box, I score. And that's the mentality that I want. That's the Dusan Vlaovic that I want against Milan. Putting that ball in the box so that he's able to score. And he will need to do it in San Siro. A stadium, Giuseppe Meazza, where he played 370 minutes without scoring in all competitions. So it will be super important for Dusan Vlaovic to break that negative uh, record. And hopefully we can have him in the starting lineup to break that record and to go and to score for Juve. Preferably scoring first. Next to him, 
10 other players and Sky Sport yesterday revealed the first predicted lineup with something that we could already kind of predict and then will there be some last minute changes we will see but Chesney should be in the goal Rugani on the left Bremer in the middle and Gatti to the right side of the three-man defense we don't change formation in the midfield what is the newness or actually continuity from the last game is Weston McKenney as a right Mezzala Rabiot left Mezzala with Locatelli as a regista on the wings there should be Oea on the right, Kostic on the left, with Milik and Dusan Vlaovic that should start that game. Now, let's speak about Mercato, because I know that's a topic that a lot of us, we love it and we want to dream. What are the players that could, that Juntoli could go for during the Mercato of January? Well, Gazeta is still reporting about Hoiberg. They are giving a 40% possibility. From what I hear, speaking with different people, I don't think that's something feasible. I don't think that's a player that Juventus do really want to go for. But on the other side, we heard in the last few days from a lot of sources that Samarcic could be the player that Juventus already would think to make a first offer to Udinese. How? With a loan with obligation to buy at certain conditions. So a loan of four or five million euro uh, immediately for six months to Udinese and then if we reach Champions League you're obliged to sign him if not you can decide because you have an option to sign him for 15 80 million euros so in total a 25 million euro a player that could be fantastic a player that yesterday I spoke about it with Romeo Agresti is on the top of the list of Giuntoli that could really have an important impact to Juve of course with a question mark Will he suffer that big jump from one team that is a Bianconero, Udinese, going to another Bianconero team that is Juventus? Because the gap, the same colors, but the gap is quite huge. On the other side, they are speaking again about Rodrigo De Paul today. Why? Because he could be, according to the papers, the perfect player with an immediate impact. They were also speaking about Calvin Phillips from Manchester City, a player that you can't buy, but for six months of loan so that he can continue to play with regularity having an impact on the field so that he can be called up and not miss Euro 2024 where England is already qualified for. So a lot of beautiful names there in the midfield. Turam disappeared from the list of Gazeta del Sport. Yesterday I asked info to Romeo Agresti. He told us, if you are going towards a player from 25 million euro that is Samarcic or you are going towards a player that is already valued 50 60 million euro that is Turam well it will be quite difficult to have the Frenchman of Nice football club so pay attention to that but there are some intriguing names Samarcic is the favorite of all of these will it be for January already we wish for but Juventus playing against Milan tomorrow can already understand what they are fighting for and that's an important one because if you win against Milan you are closing the gap with the first one in Serie A. Mentally, you are stronger. You are aware that you can beat also the top teams of Serie A, but also you are giving Juntoli the hope and the credits to go for a something better name on the Mercato of January. So a lot of names there. Bernardeschi, did we speak about it a lot on the channel? No. Why? Because from what I hear, it's more the entourage of Bernardeschi that are going in contact with Juve, asking them, look, my player wants to go back for six months on loan in Italy from January on. There is a possibility that is available for you. But yesterday speaking with Romeo makes no sense. Not for him, eh? because for him it would make totally sense. But for us, for Juventini, it makes totally no sense. Maximum of comments. Continue to like the video and subscribe if you didn't yet. Grazie, forza. Juventus.